hello everyone and welcome to today's video so in today's video i'm going to talk about the things that you need to do when you are leaving india and also the things that you need to do when you arrive to the us so you don't necessarily do these uh, do these things like the day you arrive but you can do it in the week of your arrival so let's first start with things that you need to do before you leave india and the first and the very the most important thing has to be to go to your doctor and like do your um, check up like go to the dentist go to your eye doctor and just uh, check yourself make sure you treat yourself for everything and um, yeah i mean like medical expenses are a lot over here so it's always good to go to your doctor and treat yourself all beforehand then next thing um, get your forex card so make sure that you keep some amount in your forex card and just carry some cash like in case you need it and it, i think it requires two three days to, for you to get your forex card so you can start your process as soon as your loan is sanctioned and your visa is done so get a forex card and uh, like just think about what you're going to do with your indian sim card so most of us have indian bank accounts and when we try to do an online purchase the otp goes to your indian phone number so what you can do is you can take an international sms pack uh, so that you just receive your otp every time you want to log in to your application or just make an online purchase on some indian account uh, that's very convenient and i used to have my um, bank applications on my phone through which i used to operate everything but uh, ever since i changed my phone it becomes very difficult and every time i have to call my parents to get the otp and it's really not convenient so think about what you're going to do with your sim card uh, for now i've left my sim card with my parents but i'm thinking to get international sms pack and get it back with me that's what some of my friends uh, have done i'm not sure how much it's, it costs so you'll have to look that up yourself then uh i was going to say something and i don't quite remember it right now hmm. yeah so you can also take your international driver's permit so international driver's permit is like they translate your driver's license in about 10 languages or something and then you can use it to drive uh in uh, like in countries which are not your home country and it's not like a very necessary thing because your Indian driver's license is valid for a year over here and then once you get an SSN you can get your driver's license but still if you have time then you can just bring an IDP with you and it will be very convenient because you can rent a car and just go wherever you want. Uh, so that's something that you'll have to do oh yes make sure that your phone is compatible with the sim cards over here so some phones are not compatible uh so just make sure that you bring a phone that you can use with the sim cards over here i'm sorry for that so make sure that you bring a phone that you can use with the sim cards over here or you'll also or you will also have to buy a new phone when you uh, reach to the us so i think this is pretty much all the stuff that you have to do before leaving us uh, and you know then the regular stuff check your bag check your luggage make sure that you're getting all the documents and everything that you need and stuff all the food that's it so let's go to the part uh, about things that you have to do after you arrive in the united states so the first and the very most important thing is to get a sim card so there are uh, so in the united states uh, like it's like there is a family plan and so you might have to contact someone so that you can get into that group uh, so that you can get a sim card or you can also get a uh, individual sim card for yourself then after getting a sim card you'll have to open a bank account now uh, there are different options of banks and so i when i first arrived in the us i opened an account in the bank of america so if you are below the age of 24 uh, yeah i think it's 24 or 25 if you're below the age of 24 or 25 then you can open a student account uh, which allows you to have a zero balance account but if you're above 24 or 25 then you will have to keep a minimum balance of 1500 dollars every month or there should be a direct deposit in your account so that time i did not have an on campus job uh, but i was below 24 so i opened the bank of america uh, account and the reason why i did that is because Everyone just told me that uh, BOFA ATMs are present everywhere, so it is convenient for you, and that's why I did it. 
and once i got my on campus job i opened another account in chase so the reason why i opened an account in chase after getting an on campus job is because i got a bonus of 225 dollars so if you open an account uh open a student account in chase but there is no direct deposit set up then you will get a 100 dollar donor a uh, bonus but if you have a direct deposit set up then you'll get 225 dollars of bonus so yeah i just waited for some time to get the bonus so now i have uh, accounts in chase and bofa so there are also uh, there is also the bank called santander and it's uh, like i did not uh, i have friends who have accounts in santander and they did not face any problems with the bank uh, also their transaction fees are quite low uh, as compared to bofa at least so yeah it's a good option uh, especially if you're about 25 santander allows you to open account with zero um minimum required balance like with zero minimum no minimum required balance so you can go for santander as well then the next thing that you'll have to do is go to your college and submit all of your documents so your college requires you to submit your transcript uh if you are like a fresh uh, a fresher coming just out of undergrad i don't know i think even for every yeah no 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 if you if you have not submitted your transcript uh, if you have not mailed your transcript to the college then you have to go to the college and submit your transcript because i remember doing it uh, and other than that uh, if you have to submit any other documents make sure you do that and get a get a college id card then the next thing that you i will suggest you to do is just explore uh, everything else like explore how the public transportation works in the state where you uh, where you have moved so in most of the states you like you might you, there might be some pass uh, like in boston there is a charlie card which is required for you uh, like you just have to tap the card everywhere to use the public transportation so during my initial days i just used to go everywhere and just see how train used to work because to be very honest i didn't use public transport a lot in india and then what you can do is you can uh, apply for a state id so it's like you don't have to do it right away but you can do it in the coming one month or whatever uh, so a state id is like you have to pay some amount every month and then you renew the state id or you just have to submit your documents like your passport visa everything and then they will give Okay so I, I think the dog is stopped now. So yeah so this this is something that uh, you don't necessarily have to do when you arrive but you can do it in some days so you can apply for a state id so a state id is like uh, you have to renew it every month uh, by paying some amount and you have to submit some documents and then they will give you a state id and you can carry it your everywhere with you instead of your passport. So I I really did not apply for a state ID yet. I'm planning to get a driver's license directly, but yeah, you can do that. And you do not need a SSN to get a state ID, but for a driver's license, you need an SSN. So I think that's all uh, about the stuff that you have to do after you come to the US. Just explore the places around you. and um, yeah i am just assuming that you know that you have to go to your management and get the keys and everything i think that's just something that everyone does so these were my important points of the things that you have to do before leaving and after coming to the united states um and also this was actually a recommendation from a subscriber and thank you so much for recommending me this recommending me this idea thanks a lot Um see you guys in the next video bye